A school board is forced to apologize after a green theme Christmas concert. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. Public outrage and cancel culture are just too dialed up in today's context. We have stories nonstop about how far these things are truly going. On the outrage meter, I would wager we are at about a 10 out of 10, when we should truly be closer to a 2. Things are just far out of proportion. The left is culpable for their fair share of the drama, but the right isn't too far behind, as we'll see in today's story. According to CBC, a school division apologizes after a Christmas concert was deemed anti-oil. This happened in Saskatchewan almost entirely predictably. A local school board had their annual Christmas concert and one song, supposedly, was called Santa Goes Green. As you can probably tell, it was a song about the environment. Now, Saskatchewan is similar to Alberta in terms of their oil dependence. It's a major industry in that province and the people heavily rely on it for things like income and a means to raise a family. This sparked outrage because they felt that they were under attack. The people in the audience didn't take too well to it. One father in particular created a Facebook post that gained some traction. Over 700 shares and it became news. So this is what he wrote and I'll break it down as we go along. He says, I'm just going to say it. But the kids school Christmas concert was the most un-Christmassy thing I have ever seen. It was a green Christmas theme with all the words that the carols changed to support green agendas. Considering the state of our industry, it was a kick to the growing to those who are employed in it. Now, we really have to pull these two things apart. Let's take a pause here. There is some validity to what he's saying and then some where there isn't any. First of all, the oil industry is suffering and it's an employment driver in many communities, especially in Saskatchewan. Of course, it's a tough time and these people are feeling betrayed. Having carols basically foretelling their doom might not be so well received, but the second point, the oil industry is not sustainable and presumably the carols were laying out the facts of the matter, the reality of the world and where we're heading. Going green is where the future lies. This is a truth. Hiding behind walls because you're going to feel offended isn't going to help anybody. The funny thing is, typically, that's what I tell to a lot of leftist people who are complaining about being offended in educational settings, but here we are, me telling that same slogan to people on the right. There is no immunity, and party lines don't shield you from this sort of behavior. Being offended seems to be the pinnacle now that people are basing their worldview on. It's a critical mistake, especially in a setting like a school. What really should be happening is the government should be investing into labor transfers and creating opportunities for these people. Fundamentally, they're not really angry about green Santa wearing a green hat or something like that. They're just worried about their jobs and their livelihood being put at risk, and they feel that the song is compounding that. The answer is the government has to provide a solution. The industry is collapsing. It's a known fact. People are moving away from it. There's a strong push to shut it down and move to greener resources, but it comes at a cost, and to not recognize that is a complete failure on both societal and governmental fronts. It's not as if these people love oil. They truly love this substance that comes from the earth and pollutes our environment. The reality is that they love making money and making a lot of it. These jobs traditionally paid a good wage and required very little education. If there is nothing to replace that, of course they are going to be angry and cause a outrage because they're used to one way of living and it's being taken away. Now, you don't have to replace that exactly, but there has to be a plan in place to make sure these people find employment, especially when the time comes and it's showing up to be quickly arriving on the horizon. In terms of the carols, there's also some utility to getting children to understand the trends of the future. What they hear from their parents is probably going to be biased, especially if they're getting angry about what the carols are saying. Having the children believe their future should continue to be wrapped around the oil industry is a falsehood. Exposing them to the reality of the world and making them able to plan better for things like a future career, future living habits is a good thing. It's beneficial and that's what the education system should be standing for. Showing you the truth of the matter. But at the same time, I'm also open to the argument that this was not the right time for it. It was a Christmas carol concert. But conversely, the teachers refuted this by saying that they just chose some catchy modern songs that they thought the kids would like. So there is a debate to be had here as to whether or not it was purely political or if it was just simply them picking some fun 
new age music that the kids would enjoy performing. Fundamentally, it really was just a Christmas concert as well, but the poster, the guy who started the outrage, also realized that, and he continues by saying, it wasn't the kids' fault, but it was hypocritical of the school board to allow it. They use diesel buses and they are financially supported by the oil industry. Here, he goes wrong again with his diagnostic. This is not a clear example of hypocrisy. The school, of course, is using resources available to them, and that comes in the form of things like diesel buses, which are pollutants, while they ponder, and this is important, better ways to do those same functions, though, by going green, for example. Just because you don't have the means right now does not make you a hypocrite. It would be different, though, if the school was, for example, singing about going green and actively dumping their waste into a local river. The difference here is they have a choice. In this hypothetical, you do not have to pollute the river. There are proper channels for you to distribute and dispose of your waste, but in what he's giving as an example, the diesel buses, it's not like the school board has the budget to remove that entire fleet and buy Tesla's latest electric buses which may or may not even exist. What he's pointing out to you is simply a lack of funding, research, and availability. Not so much hypocrisy. What he identifies as hypocrisy seems to me more so as simply a solution that's restricted, leaving little room for decision-making criteria and it forces you into a way of living, such as using these diesel buses and getting money from the oil industry. Who else is going to give you money? After this and some other ranting from some other concerned parents, the chair of the school board division offered an apology. She says that she was sorry for anyone offended and it was not their intention to make things political. What I do find truly hypocritical is that if you hate snowflakes, as I'm sure these people do, at least have the logical consistency to not exhibit those same behaviors yourself. This is top level snowflakery at its finest. To be offended by these carols and create outrage out of it because it called into question oil is just silly. This is an example of the right-leaning agenda falling victim to the same type of childishness that plagues us today. Now, since we're on the topic of hypocrisy, there is some more things to point out. In particular, from the other side of the aisle, the left. The entire situation is a microcosm of what's really wrong with politics today. One side does something, and the other condemns it, yet they will still actively engage in it when it suits their own agenda. Those on the left are eager to, eager to rightfully so call this a foolish display, but they will then actively support other examples of equally dim-witted cancel initiatives. This year, for example, Ellen DeGeneres was caught hanging out with George Bush. He's a Republican, and she is a Democrat. She's not a representative, she's just a public figure, but George Bush, as you know, was not just a simple regular person, he was a president. She says that when she was caught, they, some people forced her to give a rationale. She says that they are friends and political differences don't define their relationship. Someone on the left can be friends with someone on the right. It doesn't really matter that much. We like each other. That is 100% correct, yet people came at her with vitriol. How dare you engage with a conservative? You've betrayed people on your side of the, of the aisle. These guys don't share the same values as you. We don't even know that, but people try to drag her through the coals for that. They try to cancel, try to make her apologize, everything. You also have Dave Chappelle. He had a comedy special where he highlighted some tragically incoherent far-left ideas. This triggered people and critics alike, leading them to call for his canceling. Now, keep in mind, he is a comedian. What he did sort of falls under what the job entails. Then, as a Canadian, you also have Shania Twain. She effectively went on an interview and stated that she, if she was an American, she would have voted for Donald Trump. People lost their minds over that as if it wasn't something that half their country in fact did. She was forced to apologize after all the backlash, and it brings to mind the question, what does an apology even mean? In Shania's case, it was definitely not representative of recognition of wrongdoing. She didn't all of a sudden realize, oh, what I've said is tragic. I feel sorry for thinking that Trump was worthy of my vote. What's more likely to be true is that she was doing it, the apology, just to silence the crazies and get them off her back. People were calling her out nonstop, and she saw that the only way out was to apologize. But what does an apology mean then? Definitely not what it should. This is a great way to decay what apologies truly mean. A recognition of wrongdoing and a striving towards betterment. All she did was express a political opinion, 
saying that she would vote for a Republican president, which a lot of people in that country did, and she's being raked through the coals for that. Not productive in a stupid way to administer cancel culture. You pit two groups against each other in what? An effort to establish moral superiority? It's nonsense. Now we return to our story for today. This man ranted about how offended he was about the anti-coal carols, and that was laughable as well. So, the examples I listed are also laughable too. You have to be willing to condemn these actions from both sides of the political spectrum, or you become complacent, illogical, incoherent. You cannot think one of these is dumb and the others are okay. It's still the same root of cancel culture and its inappropriateness. The left has the immediate advantage because of their grievances typically come with a halo effect, but the right pulls these stunts off as well, and they should be condemned across the aisle. Cancel culture, forced apologies, outrage, these are not good things for society. In fact, they appear to me as nearly entirely destructive forces, a means to keep people from straying away from rigid ideologies, a mechanism to keep people from thinking for themselves and speaking freely. If you slip up, if you betray loyalty to a party that we think you belong to, regardless of your intent, you will be sought out and destroyed. That is no way to live. It actually encourages you to be dishonest, to lie about things. That is a false framework to build a society on. The real issue here, in terms of the caroling, is what employees of the oil sector will do when the money inevitably dries up. That's the crux of the issue, not the songs. There will come a day when they just run out of jobs because of the shift in sector. They are uncertain and it's leading to ideas like Wexit, another foolish notion. This is where the government needs to come in with a plan, not fan the flames further, which I believe Jason Kenney, the premier of Alberta, is trying to do in those provinces. You also can have the opposite effect, which is letting the oil industry cling to life via illicit means. Of course, you have to be understanding of the people, but no such loyalty is required for the industry itself, and it should not have much power. One such method of that is revealed via this quote in the article, a method of controlling the narrative. Educators are always trying to find a balance between teaching the effects of the oil and gas industry without being too critical. That's nonsense. What, this, this is education. Feelings and being too critical should never be concerns of anything. The only goal is the truth here, the facts of the matter. What is the oil and gas doing industry and what are the effects of it? We have to know straight up. You can't be concerned with offending us so you're going to hide that and not tell people the full story. That quickly betrays what education stands for and it simply becomes an agenda. We can't be having that in our educational institutions. The only goal is the truth. You do a disservice to your students and the country by holding back facts in order to appease an external stakeholder. The oil industry has no place in shaping education away from what the realities of the world are. Now, here's the caveat. If you agree with that, you should also agree that the far-left ideologues also should not push their agendas mass as education. Once education strays from a pursuit of truth into a tool of indoctrination, it marks the beginning of a countrywide failure. A failure that we will reap the consequences of in the not-so-distant future. The main theme I wanted to highlight today is consistency when condemning illogical propositions. You cannot allow your political leaning to blind you to behavior that you would label as appalling otherwise. What I've learned to do is simply like good ideas, regardless of where they come from. You can have your loyalties to a party, but to me, it's highly unlikely that you fit to every single one of their notions unless you bend yourself to fit it. I think the ideas should just come to you. What you like is what you like, and you don't have to be so rigid with it. You may like certain policies on the left, you might like certain policies on the right. Use that to better inform yourself. You don't have to be loyal to a party to the death of you. It's simply not productive and it creates these circumstances where you're willing to go all out to defend that identity. By my estimation, it's the wrong way to go about it. Now, I should also mention that the school board also messes up by not having a backbone. Like many companies and celebrities before, they buckle at the hands of the mob and simply give in to nonsense. They don't want to deal with the consequences, whether that be financial or more complaints or more media attention, so they give in. They simply grant these people a semblance of justice by saying, yeah, we're in the wrong, we apologize, because that's what an apology is also meant to do, to signify an injustice done to someone and you trying to make amends for it. Simply, in a lot of these cases though, apologies are not required, needed, 
or should even be thought of as being administered. There simply is little to no reason for it. Social media though makes this possible and something we have to figure out. How do we deal with mobs of people who voice concern over what's happening? Because with these tools like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you can find mobs of people for anything. There is going to be some subset of the population who is offended at what you say. It may not be totally representative of everybody, but they're going to be vocal about it. The vocal minority does a lot of damage and we don't realize it because there is an impression of unity. There is an impression of a massive amount of people who follow the ideology, but often I don't think it truly depicts the reality of the situation. If you were ignorant to political leanings, you might think that everyone who's conservative is a neo-Nazi or something like that based on what you see on social media and in mainstream news outlets actually. And conversely, if you had no idea about liberalism, you might think everybody on the left is a social justice warrior or a snowflake. There are so many levels of nuance to this and we have to grasp that. We have to identify where the left goes too far and where the right goes too far. With the right it's pretty easy because we already have well drawn out boundaries. Once you start crossing into the realm of identity politics, yeah that becomes a problem, but with the left is not so clear. There are certain things that they are allowed to get away with that wouldn't be possible on the other side. Partially because their causes come with a halo effect even if undeserving at some times. And that really is an in-depth topic, so we'll save that for another time. Now, this brings me to the end of today's conversation. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to leave a review and share. That will help us grow. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Perry Platform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.